Hello everybody, I'm Liz Phillips and today I'm going to talk to you about government APIs and their application or fantastic APIs and where to find them. So very basically, what is an API? It stands for Application Program Interface. It's basically, very simply defined, a set of calling conventions that define how an application can be accessed. So you could think of it like a contract between the API and the client. If you make a call to the API, you will get this in return. So when I talk about government APIs, I'm kind of talking about an umbrella of both government sources of APIs and also non-government sources about government data. Um, and so why would you use one or the other? One or the other, what are the differences between them? So government APIs, uh, you know you're getting it straight from the source. There's not going to be altered data. You're, you know, you can trust it as much as you can trust your government. <laughs> like, it's, it is the real data coming from the government. Um, and then the non-government API, uh, the data might be changed in some way, but you might like that. It might be an aggregation of a lot of different uh, data, a lot of, or data from a lot of different sources. It could also have uh, extra information. They might do summaries or something to take a lot of complicated data, boil it down for you. There's also uh, the format that you get it back could be in a more desirable format. Most government APIs give you format, uh, give you data in an XML format as opposed to a JSON format, which I think we, everyone in this room is more used to working with. There's also an intention to someone who's not a non-governmental source providing this data, they want to do it. It's They're trying to fill a need or something they feel needs to be done. And therefore, the docs in general are a little better because it's coming from a place of love or desire as opposed to, this is just my job and I have to do this. So what are some notable APIs on both sides? Um, I have a sh small selection here of both of them, uh, but I think the one of the most interesting ones of government source APIs would be NASA. They, everything from like NASA picture of the day, which is HD and beautiful of the Earth and space, uh, to a uh, list of asteroids ordered by when they will soonest pass Earth. I don't know what you would do with that, but it sounds really cool. Uh, as from the non-government side, uh, MapLight, I think, is a particularly interesting one they try to correlate donations made to legislators and their voting, which could be a very interesting data set to go over. Some common conventions of both of these groups, there's a lot of overlap. Uh, government APIs specifically want attribution and they want their data to be, they want to make sure that their data stands apart from your, your content like this is coming from the government and this is coming from my blog. Both typically ask for registration for a key, so you can't just go to a URL or ping a URL and get data back. You have to ping a URL and in your header have an API key. And I believe it's most often so that they can keep track of the call limits. So a lot of these on both sides, government and non-government sources have call limits. I found in my uh, small experience that the government APIs actually had higher call limits. For example, the NASA call limits were 1,000 per hour, 1,000 calls per hour, whereas the ProPublica Congress API that I used had 5,000 a day. Um, Non-government sources, I saw most of them said it was for non-commercial use only. And if you did want to use it for a commercial project, they wanted you to contact them and possibly pay a fee. You, like I mentioned earlier, usually get XML and sometimes JSON from government sources, whereas non-government sources, it's usually always JSON, possibly JSON and XML or YAML or YAML, which is a subset of JSON. And I saw RESTful servers on both sides. So now I'm going to start talking about my specific experience using the ProPublica Congress API. I had 
as I mentioned before, I had 5,000 call per day limit. I got my output in a JSON format. I did have to register for a key by emailing, sending, just, yeah, emailing the email that they told me to email to contact. And then they just sent me a key back. It was pretty simple. I don't think I had to say anything, but I did explain to them what I wanted to do, and I don't think I had to. So here's a couple tips. Hide your key because as we learned earlier, there are GitHub bots, or bots on GitHub that just go and search for keys that are unobscured and then grief them basically, like ping them over and over again until your access gets revoked. So hide your key. You can hide that by putting it in a file that's not tracked by GitHub and not visible to a client, or you can make a node variable. And you should also make your application with your call limits in mind. So if, if your data is not going to be updated that often, then you don't need to ping the API every time you need that data. You can download it once a day or once an hour, and then use the data you've already downloaded to inform your app, as opposed to making client behavior inform how often you ping your API. So now I'm going to show you a little demo of a very small project that I made that I'm calling the bicameral report card. And what it does is goes to the API, gets a list of all the senators from the 115th session of Congress, all the senators and representatives. And then it populates their individual page with their name, the state they represent, the party they are a part of, when they're up for re-election, and then how often they've uh, missed votes out of all the votes they've been elected for and how often they vote with their party as opposed to against their party. And just very, oops, very briefly, how that's working is I have my API key obscured in an untracked file and so I just bring it in as a variable. When I load the home page, I go to the API, get a list of all the senators, which is happening here, get a list of all the senators, then I go get a list of all the representatives, and I'm assigning that data to objects that I then pass into a nunjux render. And then on the actual page for the senator, just go back, I'm hitting the API again, getting their, their voting information and their uh, the state that they represent, the party they belong to, this, this other information. And I'm populating a file. I'm actually writing a file, and then I'm using a library called D3 that reads, has a function that will read that JSON data and then populate the, these divs with the charts. And like I said earlier, I recommend that you don't make your apps this way. You would instead, I would figure out maybe when there would be a vote, or maybe once a day or three times a day, go to the API, grab the data, and then work with an object of that data or a JSON file of that data as opposed to someone being able to build a bot that could just do this, like refresh on the home page 5,000 times and get me kicked off of my API. <laughs> uh, but those are some very basic tips. And that has been fantastic APIs and where to find them. <laughs>